there has been some cool headlines that came out. Um, we actually had a little bit, Phil and I had a little bit of a conversation about it offline with one of our previous guests. Um, uh, Darren from Open Home Foundation. Oh, yes, correct. Well, Open Home Foundation um, around this new thing coming out, part of Music Assistant. Um, but essentially, um, with Music Assistant having their first full time, proper, dedicated employee, i.e., Marvin, um, they're now releasing a wireless sync streaming protocol called SendSpin. So the idea is you're able to send high fidelity audio, album art, visualizer data, um, and all that stuff, uh, automate, automatically adapting to the device's capabilities. So what does that mean? Um, so we've got, for example, um, an e-paper display that can throw in the album cover and you might have multiple uh, music players that are playing the music. So Sonos, for example, um, I think they pioneered that where um with especially with audio over ip or like what you know as we're streaming it um the fact that your speaker at, at in your office and your bedroom and your living room all of those speakers are synchronized all in phase so as you're walking through that house you have that beautiful whole home audio kind of uh, experience right even though it's all wireless um, well, so essentially what happens is now Music Assistant, come, this new functionality called uh, SendSpin or the new protocol called SendSpin brings in that functionality into Music Assistant um, and ergo Home Assistant as well with uh, as you're leveraging Music Assistant automations there. So that's super exciting. So now that means if you have multiple um, voice PEs, like I've got one behind me there, uh, maybe you got a couple others around the house. Um, this was the big thing is when you want to play music, you couldn't synchronize it. You couldn't play it. Um, even if you could, I don't think you could play it all together, but even if you could play it all together in a group, uh, wouldn't really sound great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know um, getting synced audio like around the house, like Sonos had patents on this. They had yeah. uh, this pretty much locked down right because it's not – an easy thing to do, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I I haven't experienced SendSpin yet. Um, I haven't yet tried it out. I am a bit skeptical. I know um, as part of the announcement, they've <laughs> mentioned that um, there is support for some AirPlay 2 devices, Google Chrome devices. Um, you can also test it out using uh, the web browser. If you open up uh, Music Assistant, I believe in a web browser, uh, there is a a play button there and then that can then sync to a voice assistant PA. Um, yeah, I, I'm i skeptical. I, I hope like the, I think the goal is that you could have an AirPlay device, a Google Chrome device, a Sonos speaker and your computer and all the audio would be synced. Now to do that um, perfectly, like Sonos has, Sonos has control of the software and the hardware. So they know mm -hmm. all the plays and, and all the tricky bits, right? Um, because as soon as you get like even just a fraction out of sync, it can throw off that whole house audio feeling. Um, and even in the notes here from um, Music Assistant, the it does note that, you know, they do support AirPlay 2, but there is an asterisk there, right? Like not all devices in AirPlay are equal. Um, I think Google Cast might be similar. Um, I think this is fantastic and, you know, like uh, – it's awesome. This is part of now the Open Home Foundation and uh, the Open Home Project, so it's open source and can be used by uh, anyone. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm very interested to see where this goes. Um, uh, I have I'm a Sonos user, um, but you know why not open? I would love to be able to link up my Sonos speakers with you know maybe a, a cheaper brand speaker in the future, or something. Um, yeah, watch this space. I think. Yeah, and I mean, I think there's some really cool um, cool things you could do around the house, right? And I mean, I don't know. I didn't see anything about Amazon Echoes. I might be wrong, but I didn't. Yep. Uh, so, you know, if you're like me, you're still uh, kind of out of luck there. Yeah, I think it's uh, a wall with, problem there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, which isn't ideal for me i guess I like but, the media player component like the hacks component yeah open up a little bit but i still think there are restrictions there um yeah i don't i don't because at the end of the day you want to be able to send a mp3 url 
yes. or, or whatever format URL to the Amazon Echo. And I think that is what you can't do today. Yep. Um, or at least not natively through music assistant. So again, there's still, there's still some way to go there from, and, and I don't think that's on music assistant. I think that's on, that's on Amazon. Um, but that's huge. I think those are some massive improvements there, right? There's, um, there's a firmware update available for the voice PE that includes some functionality there. Um, as I mentioned that, uh, and then, you know, they're adding lyric support, smart fading ability to track. We've, I mean, we've talked about this in previous episodes. So this is, this, this part's not a newer, um, feature, but like ducking audio with your voice PEs and stuff like that, like it, it, it's actually getting somewhere, right? Like this is this, the, the project is actually moving forward and it's getting some really cool uh, features and functionality. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Do I think it's there yet? I think it's mostly there yet. I think it's mostly there. I don't think it's a hundred percent there again. Like for me, I'd have to replace all my echoes with voice PEs and stuff like that. Um, but other than that, I think I, it's okay. Yeah. I it's think yeah, obviously easy. you're not going to be listening to high fidelity audio on a voice PE unless on a voice PE, absolutely not. leveraging, you know, that 3.5 mil audio out, but even then that's analog audio. Even then, how much are you getting out uh, from there, right? The, the DAC yeah. is, I don't think the DAC on there is powerful enough, but you know, I, I've been seeing people on Facebook and a lot of these other like Reddit and stuff like that, where, who are building speakers with, I mean, right now they're still mostly based on the voice PE, but I'm sure there's somebody working on something, um, with a more powerful DAC. Yeah. So 